What's up, everyone? I got Sumner on the podcast today, and Sumner and I were just connecting about my hometown. Sumner was familiar with where I live now and where I grew up, and that's in Amish country, Ohio. And uh, I can confidently say that literally no one that has been on the show has ever gotten that before. So, uh, Sumner, props to you. If you could, it's it's great to have you on the show. If you could just talk a little bit about your yourself, where you're at right now, and kind of how you got into Amazon for the first time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So first of all, thanks so much for having me on. Excited to kind of dive in and hopefully, you know, share as much value as possible. So just kind of a brief background about myself. So right now, uh, my wife and I are living in Playa del Carmen, uh, Mexico. We're, before we were in Costa Rica, before that, Turkey and Brazil. Uh, my wife's Brazilian, I'm American. So we basically, kind of how it all happened is first, you know, graduate college, we were both working kind of nine to fives. My wife was in architecture. I was in um, business analytics. So working kind of with Adidas um, on different kind of qualitative research projects. So very much into kind of data and, and more on the qualitative side versus the quantitative. Um, didn't feel that my skills were really being utilized to the best you know, capacity and felt that I could do better on my own. Started looking up ways how to make money online, right? YouTube Classic. videos, articles. And for whatever reason, and my wife and I were like, you know, we were just you know, every night we were, this is what we were doing. We weren't watching Netflix. We were just researching, yep. researching, came across this idea of like, you know, Amazon FBA or um, selling private label products, mm -hmm. kind of filling a hole in the market with your own kind of physical product. For whatever reason, it resonated. We took some, you know, <laughs> built up, sold a bunch of stuff, built up some capital, you know, had a couple garage sales and used <laughs> that, um, you know, first, I think it was around like 7K to invest in our first product. It was more successful than we expected, started launching more nice. products. And ultimately just kind of building that business. Once we kind of were like, okay, this is literally life-changing. This is nuts. Um, we started sharing more information about it just on, you know, YouTube videos. We had a Facebook group and then that started evolving as well. But first and foremost, it's all kind of Amazon sales. And then from that, since all of our income's online, we had this conversation. We were in Cincinnati, Ohio. Great, great place. But we, you know, my wife's from Brazil. So we're like, Brazil's a great place. You know, it's warm, nice beaches, especially where she's from in the, in the Northeast very kind of like Caribbean like. And we just kind of thought like, what if we like just moved to Brazil for a little bit I and spent, it. you know, reduced our costs by, mm -hmm. I forget what the factor was, but significantly reduced our living expenses to ultimately we could reinvest more back in the business because we're relying on it for our lifestyle. Um, right. where I know some other sellers don't really rely on, you know, their Amazon business or their, their Amazon products for their lifestyle. It's, you know, just kind of reinvest all their profit back in. Um, that was our thought. So we did, we moved to Florianopolis, Brazil, stayed there for six months. We're like, this is kind of cool. Uh, let's go to Turkey. Then we went to Turkey, Costa Rica, Mexico. Um, and overall, I've been able to kind of, our living expenses are lower than um, what we were previously spending in Cincinnati, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And we just really love traveling. So for us, it just kind of makes sense, try and travel as much before we have kids. And that's kind of just how it all started. Obviously oversimplifying, but um, sure, that's sure. where we are now. And yeah, it been no. ups and downs too. So it's, it's been both, but ultimately oh, it's been course. really kind of crazy the past three years. I, I, I love that. And, and for people's context, so this, this episode originally was oriented towards really diving into and picking apart PPC for beginners. So specifically, the recommendations around, Sumner's recommendations around the first campaigns to start when you get your, your first couple products into Amazon, and then how to scale after that. So we're going to talk about that. But also, in talking with Sumner before, uh, before we started recording, I, th I think there's enough value here from your experience traveling somewhere to just like dive into how you made that work. Because I know that a lot of Amazon sellers want that to happen in their lives. So the second half of this session, I'd really like to dive in a little bit to that. But before we get there, first, let's talk about PPC. And actually, even before that, I'm curious, when did you start selling? Like what year was that? That's a good question. Uh, so I'm terrible with dates. My wife is, by the way, my wife, we kind of have allocate our tasks out. One of hers is kind of, she's very organized. So for me, I'm very bad with dates. I pretty much just remember my <laughs> like, own birthday no and grass. anniversary, but no it's idea. about, I believe it was, and like I said, I just want, she'd correct me if she was here, but I believe June of 2018. Okay. So I it believe was, was our okay. first official, pro when it actually went live. Obviously, yep. there's a lot of research kind of beforehand. I believe that's the correct date. So, you know, I think, what, two or three years about, so. Yep, no, that's good. It's it's just interesting to see when people start because there are kind of two buckets that I find. Like, some people are like the legacy sellers, right, that started way back in 1415. Yep. And I, yep. I like to have both 
perspectives because it's just interesting to see the different perspective from legacy sellers and sellers that I would say, I mean, you're not like brand, brand new starting in like 19, 20, 21, but like you, you're in a, a good kind of new, new ish phase of Amazon. I like having that perspective. So to kind of kickstart things, let's just like dive right into PPC. When, when sellers are, well, I guess I should ask first, when do you think in your strategy and what you recommend to people who start selling, when should sellers start running PPC campaigns in your opinion? Because breaking down the, the different strategies here, some sellers recommend not running PPC right away. Some sellers recommend doing something like external ads first, giveaways, search, find, buy. For beginners who are getting their first product into Amazon for the first time, when do you think sellers should start running PPC? Yeah, so ha happy to answer it and dive in and really briefly, because I think this would be valuable. That's the only reason I would yep. add just kind of how I got into Amazon PPC specifically or kind of like how I play into the kind of overall Amazon PPC category. Yeah, yeah. Because first of all, like I said before, I come in at this from an Amazon seller's perspective. There are a lot of, I mean, brilliant, you know, Amazon kind of PPC gurus and experts out yep. there um, that aren't Amazon sellers. They have, you know, their clients are doing ridiculous numbers and all that. Um, but just kind of a different perspective. And basically how my wife and I got into Amazon PPC, especially with myself, was we originally, however many, you know, like a couple of years ago or whatever, we're just thinking, okay, we keep hearing about Amazon PPC and all these results. We need to get into this and start kind of setting up campaigns and, and learn more about it. I set up some initial campaigns and looking back, absolute garbage, terrible <laughs> structure. I, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, yeah. and, and I think many sellers struggle with that. And I basically thought based on all the research that I did, it was like, oh, this is just too complicated for me. I need to hire this out. So we basically hired this agency, which I won't name. It was like $2,000 a month was their fee on top of obviously the ad spend. And in my, I mean, looking back, I mean, it was a scam. It, it was yeah. awful. Results were terrible. And it was that moment that I'm like, all right, screw this. I need to figure this out. Like this is, mm. and it was from that moment that I just like, you know, networking with people at conferences, um, watching every YouTube video I could, joining all these Amazon PPC specific Facebook groups, looking at subreddit, all this kind of stuff uh, and, and learning and testing. And I started finding like when I started implementing some of these strategies, I saw direct results and for you know certain products, start implementing them with other products and seeing the same results. Then I was like, hey, you know, there's some, um, one of my, you know, kind of one of the few followers that I have uh, that was like, uh, you know, wanted some help with PPC. I was like, hey, I'll do this for you for free just so I can test. So just nice. testing as much as I can and found consistently that when I did, you know, X, Y, and Z, I would get overall this type of output. And mm -hmm. basically at the end of all this realized it's a lot easier than I think a lot of people make it out to be, because I think there's incentive for a lot of these people to make it complicated to where you have to kind of maybe yeah, yeah, get yeah. their course or get their service or whatever, not all, then that's not what I'm saying. But I just feel one of my realizations as an Amazon seller first getting into it, that maybe it could be maybe uplifting for some uh, people listening is that I honestly believe, especially focusing on the fundamentals, it's not that difficult or crazy to see some great results, um, you know, through Amazon PPC. So that's just kind of the- No, no, I, I love that. that I, I want to pull something out of there because I think you're right. You're right. And this conversation is really important where PPC is this really ambiguous, complex idea in a lot of sellers' minds. And it is, it is, yeah. or it can be complex. As you scale, it can really be sure. a complex thing. But how can- how can sellers properly boil it down to its most, like, how can sellers simplify it? How can you simplify yep. this for sellers? A hundred percent. At least I can help. I can, I can help. Simplify. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, this is what I would say. So like I said, I'm, and, and this is a great topic as well, because I am, you know, I talk to, you know, especially newer Amazon sellers every day. I mean, every day I'm getting messages and, and all of that. So I'm, you know, very closely associated and track their progress. They keep me updated on, hey, here's the recommendations and here's how things change. So it's not just, my opinion, of course, I try to be as results-based and statistically significant as possible. So the first step is, and this is what so many, especially new or be, kind of beginner sellers overlook, is number one is your value proposition. And then number two is your listing. Everyone goes directly to yep. the kind of the PBC side or try, they try to win in campaign manager where any sort of advertising or marketing is an amplifier. So for lack of a better word, if you have crap, right? If your listing has terrible images, copywriting, if you don't have a strong value proposition, meaning what do you offer that no other seller is offering? Like what, when someone goes to your listing, you know, it could be either that you are offering a completely kind of different, a completely new and different solution, maybe a sort of like a new invention or new creation or a better, maybe a better version of existing products that are there. But in either case, you know, 
how are you better or different than all these other options? And I asked that to a lot of new sellers and a lot of the responses, they don't know. Well, my packaging, I'm like, Oh, okay. So what, you know, show me the data that, that made you lead to that decision of where packaging is going to be your differentiation. And a lot of times it's, here's just what I want to do versus let me look at the data and see what do customers actually want and like back it with actual, you know, maybe keyword data, um, review analysis, things like that. So that's kind of step one is value proposition. I find a lot of sellers, they don't have something that people want. So guess what? Doesn't matter how much marketing or advertising you do, it's going to be like kind of, you know, spinning tires on mud. It just, it's not going to go anywhere. Um, not saying that will be the case or, or if you're not no, getting no. great PPC I mean, results, you, you that's just argue, one thing to consider. You can argue that PPC strategy starts at the product, starts way back at Absolutely. the product inception hundred percent. And what's great is, I mean, the better, and, and I know that's a general and everyone knows this, but a lot of people don't actually apply it, but the better that your product is, I mean, that's going to be fewer, your re return rate's going to be lower. You're going to get naturally better reviews just on its own. Um, you know, your PPC performance and all other marketing and advertising, you're going to have a product that, that, you know, influencers will want to shout out that people will want to write about in their blog. So like, that's just such an important part of the process. I know there's different strategies for that in terms of kind of the product research or product opportunity. Um, very, very important. And I find so many people just skip over and they're like, ah, well, what can I do with Amazon PPC to, you know, I'm like, well, that's kind of step one and we can get, we'll get into the kind of the more of the PPC yep, side, but yep. that's a very important that people. That's a good foundation. Because, that is a great yeah. foundation. Because that's the biggest thing that one of the biggest issues that I see is that, is that it's, it's not as much about their campaign structure or the keywords or products that they're targeting or their bids, um, which all play in, but it's, it's for a lot of sellers, it kind of comes down to that. And that's very important. So that's kind of step one. Step two, of course, is your um, Amazon listing. Mm -hmm. So obviously make sure your product and kind of those intangibles are, um, are there. And then your listing needs to show that, you know, display that really well. So high quality images, images that look like they belong in a magazine, right? Not just some yep. cheap, you know, maybe some photographer you find on Fiverr, maybe they can do a great job, but also, you know, make sure it's quality, um, you know, compelling copywriting, right? Like you're a human being, not like you're a corporation, <laughs> right? My product does this and it does this. It's like, okay, great. You know, add some humor to it, add something fun, like be different than every single other option. Um, and then also, and this kind of plays even more directly into the kind of Amazon PPC side is of course, the keyword optimization for your listing as well is going to be very, very important as well um, with Amazon PPC to obviously make sure that you are you know, getting maximum ability to get seen and getting indexed for all of your important keywords. Um, and yeah, so keywords, copywriting, images, making sure those are as best as they can be because you know, improving the conversion rate of your listing is going to directly, you know, any traffic you send, whether Amazon PPC, Google ads, Pinterest, whatever, it's going to, you know, it, it's going to convert better no matter what. So that's kind of the step two. One value proposition, two is the listing. And then three, kind of getting into the actual Amazon PPC side, definitely some important points. Um, first thing you want to do before you actually start setting up campaigns and start diving in is really have a clear understanding of what your goals are. And even if your goal is to launch, you know, product launch, you know, how much are you willing to budget? Um, you know, what's your profit margin, uh, you know, pre, and then also what do you estimate kind of after, uh, you know, how much do you value kind of ranking? Are you using PPC to get reviews? Kind of all those questions and there yep. can be, you know, many others as well, but getting like, I mean, get a Google sheet, get a, get a piece of paper and really write down the very, very specifics of what you hope to achieve or what you kind of hope to partially achieve through Amazon PPC. And then you'll know kind of how to utilize the tool because Amazon PPC, like you mentioned before, I completely agree is it can be very complicated. It can, you yep. can use it in a robust number of ways. So a lot of people think, oh, there's Amazon PPC and it's just kind of this like box. It's, you can, you know, you can spend $10 a month. You could spend a lot more uh, thousands or tens of thousands. I mean, there's some products that do ridiculous, you know, uh, oh. ad spend even yeah. just on Amazon PPC. Uh, but, you know, specifically for kind of those newer uh, beginner sellers, it can be used in a, in a variety of ways and you need to know your goals first to then know exactly how to plug in PPC to directly meet those goals. So that would be kind of the next step. Wait, wait, yeah. Real quick, stopping at that, at that step, because that's an important step. How, what are, what do you think are the most essential goals for beginners to set? So you mentioned ranking, you mentioned review gathering. What do you, yeah. what do you suggest beginners try to focus on for their initial goals? Definitely. So um, for Amazon specifically, reviews, very, very, obviously very important because that's going to drastically improve your conversion yep. rate. Um, you know, legitimate, uh, you know, good reviews, not all this kind of, you know, black hack tactics. I wouldn't recommend it. Obviously can't recommend. 
Um, reviews are important. Keyword ranking. So identify, and this is, uh, I, I try to keep things simple because my mind can go in like a thousand different ways. <laughs> but um, yeah, keyword ranking. There are so many keywords on Amazon. There's so many keywords and so many sellers focus on their, mo their the few most competitive keywords. That's great. If, if there are relevant keywords that a bunch of people are searching for every month, you want to get visibility and ultimately capture a percentage of sales for that keyword. But a lot of people go at that right away where I can have a different strategy personally, especially for people that are more kind of budget conscious, smaller sellers, all that. But yeah, reviews, um, keyword ranking for very targeted keywords. And those would be the two big, I mean, ultimately it's profit. Uh, and those would be the right. two most important that I focus on with my own PPC campaigns. I'm trying to think if there's something obvious that I'm forgetting. because No, I, I think, going. I mean, but those would be, it, in my mind, those are those are two of the biggest, most important things that PPC can do for a beginner. So let's let's take yeah. those two goals, right? And let's move to the next step with those two goals in mind. We have kind of reviews, and we have kind of the idea of yeah. ranking, or at least generating traffic, generating momentum for your product. So, what does the next step involve then for those two types of campaigns? For sure, for beginners. So for reviews, again, kind of analyzing your goals. Do you want to use Amazon PPC to generate reviews, or do you want to, you know? get reviews first and then run PPC to have a potentially, you know, maybe lower a cost because that's an important metric that a lot of new sellers kind of focus on. Um, if it is to gain reviews, one of the biggest tips that I can give that I found with my own products is, so first of all, overall, um, if you don't have reviews, right, compared to if you had 10, 100 reviews, yep. it, your, your listing will not convert as well. So just keep right. that in mind with PPC that, and that's again with your goals, what are you willing to kind of spend unprofitably in order to get those reviews, how much is a review worth to you? And that's completely kind of up to you in your own category to kind of figure out. But PPC can be a great way of getting those reviews. Um, just keep in mind that it's, it's all kind of common sense, right? If someone goes on Amazon, they type in, you know, I don't know, taco holder, type in taco holder, they see your ad that has zero reviews, right? What's their likelihood to kind of imagine your click-through rate compared to them, they're likely, you know, maybe at the beginning, choose some other options. And that's also where kind of your differentiation um, and value proposition are coming come into play. What I found personally, when I have um, zero reviews and when I want to use PPC to specifically gain reviews, um, what I do is I will identify products that are similar to mine and in some cases, complementary. So in the, in the case of similar, it'd be, you know, other kind of taco holders. Yep. And specifically taco holders that have, um, either zero reviews or even one review that have a average of a three-star rating or less that are FBM and not FBA, that maybe they're very similar, but for whatever reason have a ridiculously high price point. And basically kind of, and you can do this manually as well. You, can, you don't even need to necessarily, you know, pay for a tool, although there, there are definitely tools that can be very helpful with this. And um, target these with a low bid. So basically create an ASIN targeting campaign Yep. Target each of these kind of product targets. You have literally hundreds yep. um, at a low kind of cost per click. And what I found, again, personally with a lot of my own products, mm -hmm. a lot of products that I've tested with as well, that even with zero reviews, these tend to get the most initial sales, specifically at those zero reviews, because you're basically showing up on those other kind of product pages where, you know, someone for somehow got to this product, this taco holder that has zero reviews. And they scroll down and they see your um, sponsored product listing. It also has zero, but your main image is much better. Then they click and they see, wow, oh my gosh, the copy, the images. Oh my goodness. You know, it's especially when you kind of execute on the, all those things well with your listing, people are much more likely to buy when they see how professional yep. your listing is. Even with zero, they're like, oh, it's a new seller. So yeah, they're more willing to kind of take that risk on you without seeing that social proof. Hmm. So I found that that kind of campaign type specifically can perform well. Of course, you know, they're very, yeah, there, variance. Yeah, there's variance uh, and all of that, but that would be one that I think a lot of people are missing out on. And it can be, yeah, it can, it can get some fairly um, impressive results. Uh, and then obviously, as time goes on, you can start adding in more competitive ASINs or, you know, product targets right. to that campaign as time goes on. Or you can kind of keep that separate, that low competition ASIN, and then also have a high competition ASIN campaign. That's a really good way to start. Another one as well is a misspellings campaign. Mm. So this is where, especially if you're in a category where there is common misspellings, but even not. What I like to do is I will go, so usually, you know, when I'm kind of constructing an Amazon listing, I will have something called kind of like a keyword master list, mm -hmm. just a list of all of those high searched relevant keywords that I ultimately want to show up for in some capacity on Amazon. And I'll go back to that list and I'll just identify maybe like the top five phrases 
that are used to kind of describe my product or my overall kind of product category. Like maybe in this case, you know, taco accessories for taco holder or like taco Tuesday. I don't know, but maybe that taco Tuesday is a little bit broad, but those top five phrases, I just go to Google and type in um, misspelling generator tool. And there's like a bunch of free, basically um, what you'll do is you put in these five phrases, uh, the tool will spit out all of these common misspellings. And then you'll create a campaign. You can create just a misspellings campaign. This will be an exact match campaign. So you'll take these um, misspellings, add them in exact match, and that's the key. Because basically what you want to do in the strategy, which is pretty inherent, but when someone types in a particular misspelling, uh, to, to very inexpensively appear for that commonly misspelled keyword. And especially, it's very easy to, to target literally thousands of keywords. Um, so even if a lot of these keywords get you know very, very, very low visibility every year, statistically, it will add up when it's kind of in volume. And it's very easy to do, very simple to set up. And I set like something like a two cent bid. In some cases I forget, I think it was like a 15 cent bid. I have to look back, um, but yes. pretty easy to kind of generate this, set it up again, it's gonna be exact match. And maybe for each phrase, it'd be a different ad group. So you have the misspelling campaign, um, misspelling one ad group, misspelling two ad group, and then, you know, maybe like five, you can, you can do a bunch more, but you know, maybe around five. Um, and now you have hundreds of common misspellings at a very, very low bid. And statistically, that'll be another kind of, um, especially for newer sellers, it may not generate a ton of sales, but for us, we get from that campaign alone, I know it's like a few dozen sales every month from our collective um, misspelling campaigns. So they do generate sales, maybe not a ton, um, but especially for a, a seller, maybe on a lower budget, that's just kind of, a, in my opinion, a good overall campaign yeah, yeah. No, for a lot of sellers I, to set up. I, I want to pull out the, the, I want to zoom out a little bit and summarize this general strategy for beginners yeah. that might be listening, right? Because what you're talking about is essentially being really strategic with your placements to not go for the most popular keywords necessarily, even though that is a strategy to go for like the keywords that Absolutely. are, let's say taco holders getting like a hundred thousand searches a month. That's the most popular search term for your product. It's going to be a little bit more, it's going to take a little bit more budget to target keywords like that. But if you, again, just to summarize, if you go yeah. over and you, you, with these, these strategies that you're talking about, you have to be a little bit more pinpointed. You have to be, um, you have to identify these these keywords in, in a much more specific way rather than just taking like the biggest keyword and rolling with it. But these keywords, if you can identify these keywords and these products that are relevant to your product and that are less competitive, you can get a decent amount of traffic. And why is this working? Because let, first, it takes more it takes more effort to, to set these up. Second, just not as many sellers are, are running with a strategy like this. And in PPC... Wherever you go, where fewer people are, it's a little bit easier to get conversions. Yes. It's a little bit less expensive. So that's that's a, an interesting yeah. strategy, and I actually have not heard a whole lot of people talk about this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And again, I know many Amazon PPC ex, kind of experts. I don't yeah. consider myself an expert. I'm just constantly trying to figure out what actually works. Everyone has different strategies, but of course, like I said, I'm very. I feel I'm very in tune with a lot of, the, especially these newer sellers, and I see exactly what they're doing. And I've recommended this to dozens. Um, I don't know how many. I've seen, I know of the few that have actually taken the advice uh, and have reported back on exactly, I mean, I look at their campaigns and, and see yeah. how it's actually performing. And specifically, again, because I know there's kind of those two big goals with this goal of kind of using PBC to generate um, some reviews, the more competitive a keyword or product target is, usually it'll be a little bit harder to kind of get ultimately to get clicks and get sales yep. for that keyword. So this will kind of can potentially help with that goal. Again, specifically using PPC to get reviews and also to scoop up some fairly inexpensive sales. So those are kind of two campaigns. Another one kind of similar would be a, um, and again, it depends on your product. If you have a product that has like maybe some English written on it, it wouldn't work as well, but find kind of the second most commonly spoken language in your country. So if it's Amazon, obviously US, uh, Spanish, uh, maybe, you know, in Canada, maybe have a French campaign or English campaign. I know it's kind of 50, 50 um, and, and so on for, for other marketplaces as well. And take your, you know, again, kind of look through your report, take, you know, maybe the top 20 highest, most relevant, highest searched phrases, go to Google Translate, or if you have a Spanish speaking friend, then have them kind of help you out with this and translate those into Spanish. Again, set a low bid and you can create a separate exact match campaign targeting those exact Spanish or, or other kind of foreign language yeah. keywords. And then, again, with the whole kind of the, the, the strategy behind this is these are less competitive targets that your competitors likely aren't kind of going after and can ultimately result in lower cost per clicks, um, can potentially higher ACOS and, and be the best kind of chance of getting reviews with your PPC. Um, another one that, that I found that works fairly well is 
And this, this is the last, I know I, I kind of dive right and get No, no, like this tactical. is good, this is good, this is good. The last one that I'll share kind of about this in this kind of similar vein of these very kind of, you know, high profit, maybe low competition type yep. of campaigns is a uh, low bid broad campaign. So mm. taking your, and you could also do, if you want to be a little bit more targeted, just do the exact same thing, but instead do phrase, um, you know, use phrase match, yep. but find your, again, top maybe 10 to 20 uh, phrases, take those, create campaign uh, targeting them in broad match hmm. and then set a low bid for a very, very low bid. That's the key. You don't want to set a high bid because these are high yeah. com competition kind of phrases, but low competition. And because you kind of, from what I found in a lot of cases, when you set the bid um, lower, you know, Amazon still wants to spend your money and still they have so many different placements uh, and, and visibility for your ad. Um, maybe not obviously the most prominent, but still in places that people will see and click and ultimately buy hmm. um, that setting that lower bid kind of forces Amazon you know, in broad match or even in phrase match to find those less competitive, um, you know, kind of other keyword targets to ultimately display your ad for, get clicks, get sales and all of that. So yeah. again, these can be, you know, kind of mixed results, but overall, I mean, consistently, I've seen some, some pretty decent results in terms of, you know, it's fairly, it's actually not that difficult to set up these campaigns, fairly, you know, yeah, low yeah. time. I don't know when it's your first time, maybe a little bit more complicated, but um, and then ultimately, you know, every dollar that you kind of put toward Amazon PPC with these campaigns, it can be a pretty fair, uh, good ROAS and, and fairly low ACOS. So I, I have uh, kind of two questions. One's a follow-up, right? So number one, are there any other types of main primary campaigns that you think beginners should consider in this whole concept of either launching or review gathering? And second, the follow-up then is if not, and then in addition, I guess, to answering that question, if there are, what is the next step? But yep. question one. Yep. So yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So it's really limitless what kind of campaigns you set up. And again, it's a lot of people kind of get out their notepad. They're like, wait, summer, uh, how many campaigns do I set up? What? Again, that goes back to your goals. And then, you know, because right. there is no right or wrong necessarily. There is profitable and unprofitable. There is, you know, meeting your goal and not, but that's why it's so important. However, overall, yes, there are definitely other campaigns. These are just kind of um, for certain sellers, maybe bigger sellers, they would look at this and be like, oh, not really worth my time. However, yep. I might disagree because um, it's basically very cheap sales you could potentially generate every month, but it depends on your goals. Mm. But yeah, definitely. So that's on kind of the maybe using PPC for review specifically. Mm -hmm. Then kind of that second part for keyword ranking, definitely. So my strategy, especially for beginner sellers, that's kind of obviously more of my niche and kind of, you know, where I'm in tune with is um, long tail keywords, mm. focusing on long tail keywords first. So what I mean by that is, so Basically, to summarize, uh, the longer a keyword is, the less competitive that keyword is going to be because it's more. The longer a keyword is, usually the more specific. Um, so, for example, you know, you have you know shoes, very very broad, general, and extremely competitive from an Amazon PPC standpoint, or from a um, you know kind of uh, uh, optimization standpoint, trying to rank for that keyword, oh, which yeah. wouldn't really be recommended because someone types in shoe, just because you're ranking, it's like very you know very few percentage of people are actually looking for that specific type. So anyway, so that's, you know, you have shoe, then maybe red shoe, you know, red men's shoe, red men's running shoe. You see, the longer that it becomes, the more specific it gets. That means fewer competitors. And it's more specific to your product, which usually can result in a higher conversion rate than some of those broader, shorter tail keywords. So longer tail keywords can actually be a lower cost per click and higher conversion rate. And this, is, this isn't, I haven't been able to statistically kind of prove this, but it's some findings from specifically Tomer Rabinovic. Somebody, so I want to kind of cite him on this, uh, yeah. where I kind of got this idea and his findings. And I've heard other sellers talk about this as well. And I've seen some great results on our own as well is when you are targeting longer tail kind of keywords that contain your kind of maybe higher searched, um, you know, maybe broader, more competitive keyword in that long tail phrase. So for example, if you want to rank for men's running shoe mm -hmm. and you're kind of targeting men's red running shoe or men's red and black running shoe, um, that can actually kind of help you both rank obviously. And, and yes. you can actually organically rank for that long tail keyword, even though there's not as many monthly searches as these more competitive keywords, um, there's still sales. So it's easier to rank for those keywords. So when people talk about ranking. They always focus on those few, very competitive and that's great. And, and I think that's, you definitely should ultimately, but take it in steps. If you think about it, like a snowball going down the side of a mountain, mm -hmm. you start with those longer tail keywords. They're easier to rank for, tend to have a higher conversion rate, less competitors. Um, especially when you have zero reviews or only a few reviews, yep. uh, that's where that's personally where I would focus on, especially for those more kind of maybe budget conscious newer sellers. And then slowly 
you can either create a new campaign or in that campaign, start adding more competitive, you know, kind of shorter keywords mm -hmm. in as you get more reviews, as you get more rank and sales. And again, it's kind of like this snowball running down and yep. the campaign kind of becomes bigger and bigger, but you start with the low competition, then the kind of mid tail or, or you know, middle competition, then higher competition um, and kind of slowly work up. That's personally, again, just a general strategy. Again, depends on your goals, but that- No, no, is, and that's, 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 definitely that's where I see that, 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 uh, I don't want to say slow, but the, the momentum ramp up, yes. that's that sort of thing, which takes patience and, and honestly yes, discipline to stick to a strategy like that. I see a lot of, uh, a lot of beginners kind of not having the patience and the dedication discipline to yeah. start with that strategy. And when you try to jump ahead, it can work still like some yes. markets in some markets, again, it, this, these conversations are always tough to have because it's so dependent on the product that you're selling in the market that you're in. But in some markets, you're going to be able to jump straight to the primary keyword. So, for example, like I, I sold thank you cards, right? That was one of the a couple of years ago. That was it. Started selling uh, and targeting the biggest keyword, thank you cards, instantly. And because of, A, the timing, which was a couple of years ago, so it wasn't as competitive as it is now. So it was a lower competitive market. Because of our design, it's a very design-oriented market. Yes. The, the people's purchase depends on the design of the card itself. We did very well. Because our design worked, people liked it, and they bought a lot of these thank you cards from the primary keyword. That didn't work for every product that we sold. Yeah. Some of these strategies, you really, and I would say this, this momentum building strategy is probably the safest strategy to move forward with. And I think some people can sometimes misconstrue safe with like a little less ineffective, but that's not the case. From what I've seen here and, and sounding from what you're saying as well, this, this momentum building strategy doesn't mean less effective. It, it means it's perhaps a little bit of a better strategy overall for more people to consider. No, yeah, absolutely. So overall in terms of kind of um, less competitive ASIN targeting as well as you know longer tail kind of keyword yep. targeting, in my opinion, this should be a part of your strategy in almost every case. Absolutely. It should be part. So again, going back to your goals, like how quickly do you, like if there's certain goals, you know, how quickly do you, do you want or need to rank? What keywords do you want or need to rank for? Um, you know, all those kind of questions, those main and then the kind of the breakout questions from that. So yeah, depending, but so in one case, maybe you begin with the longer tail and kind of move up the kind of slow and steady. Yep. Or if you want to be a little bit more aggressive, then have both campaigns, maybe have a campaign, you know, maybe, you know, exact phrase and broad where, you know, you have kind of higher competitive and then less competitive um, keyword targets for those respective campaigns to be a little bit more aggressive. But in either case, still include long tail keywords yes. as your strategy and a specific kind of, I wanna make sure I get the data right. Um, and obviously we've seen results for this with our own products, but um, an individual that, I, an Amazon seller and a newer Amazon seller that actually helped with this who was originally only targeting those more competitive um, keywords and getting some really great results. He was at his kind of target ACOS, generating, you know, pretty decent sales every month and, and getting reviews and was happy with all that. Created the separate campaign. So basically just had everything that was running, all of his campaigns, great, kept it as is. And then also added an exact phrase and broad match campaign, specifically yep. targeting long tail keywords that he wasn't already targeting. And he said that, let me just make sure that I, I get this correctly. He saw a 75% increase in sales driven from Amazon PPC advertising. Wow. Um, and, and, and a 10% reduction in ACOS. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. That's so, wild. I mean, if you're not targeting those keywords, right. And, and there's the theory is like, well, Sumner, if I'm targeting these shorter keywords and phrase and broad, naturally Amazon's going to show me not necessarily. I mean, you could look at your search term report and kind of see that. And right. a lot of time, you know, experiment and kind of test a, a lot of it obviously is testing, but, but and it's just in general, I, a lot of people don't take this into account because they see kind of a longer keyword. They're like, oh, it doesn't get a lot of sales. The key is, and it's not difficult to do to generate a list of, li and you can do this for free. You can do this on your own using Google sheets and just doing kind of like an, an, and function, you know, two cells like this and this yep. equals this to create those longer tail keywords, target hundreds um, that are relevant specific to your product and at a, at a lower bid. And like the worst case scenario is when you add, maybe you create these new campaigns, worst really realistically kind of worst case scenario is you really just waste time and maybe a little yep. bit of money, but what, that's one thing that's great with PPC. It's, or, yep. or, you know, it's, you pay per click. Yep, so exactly. if you get all these, it's like, oh, I got these impressions, but I didn't get clicks or I'm not even getting impressions. That's like the worst case. Great. Not a big deal. Where the best case, and, and in my view, in my experience, the more likely case is to scoop up some additional, you know, fairly profitable sales through um, Amazon PPC every month. 
And I, I, I do want to add uh, a small thing in here because I, I'm approaching this from the software side, right? Like, you know, representing Viral Launch, this just oh, yeah. interjecting a, a little bit of a strategy. If you want to take it a step further with some of those long tail keywords or with some of the uh, multi-language keyword, other, other language keywords or misspellings, you can put those keywords into tools to see the keyword volume to see. And again, yeah. it's not exact keyword volume. They're, they're estimates. But if you're trying to really, really prioritize certain keywords in each of those categories, like let's say you want to be a little bit more pinpointed. Maybe you want to go a little bit faster on some of those less popular terms. You can check the search volume. You can see which one on which of those, um, which of those misspellings or which of those keywords from other languages have more search volume to put into exact target campaigns, so that you're you're spending a little bit more effectively, or not effectively, but you're spending more targeted on each of those keywords. Yep. I'm not sure oh, if yeah, you do absolutely. that if that's a part of your strategy or not, but. Oh yeah, absolutely. No, it's it, oh definitely, and that kind of goes back to kind of having that you know that master keyword list. Yep. Um, and having those kind of, you know, having the search volume so I can prior, so that would prioritize, for example, yeah, the misspellings can, I mean, it would prioritize really everything. It's very, very important, actually, even if it, you know, though it's an estimate, because obviously Amazon's a little bit more restrictive. Um, it's very, very helpful uh, to have yeah. kind of those, the estimated search volume. So of course, you know, on one end for kind of the, the optimization side for your listing, you know, what keywords are going to go in my title and kind of be most prominent and throughout that same exact list that you use and Fire Launch is a great tool for that. They use for your listing. You can absolutely use that then to prioritize your campaigns and also know, okay, right. you know, here's the competition. Here's kind of the search volume for these keywords. Hmm. Yes. Maybe I'll, you know, target these in phase three, for example, if you're going through that kind of three phase process or, oh, I need, I know I need to kind of get ranked for these quickly. Um, so that's what I'm going to target. So absolutely. A hundred percent. I'm curious. I'm curious. I want to, I want to dive into the concept of uh, having core campaigns and testing campaigns. And again, no exact answer yeah. is applicable to everybody, but what does your allocation, what is your suggestion for allocating budget to test cam or core campaigns? First of all, getting some of those set up and, and good to go. And where is the switch over to kind of starting and introducing testing campaigns? Yeah, no, that's, that's interesting. And it, I guess it depends on how you kind of define it. And obviously everyone's strategy is going to be different for, yep. for me personally, I feel like all of our campaigns are testing campaigns. <laughs> oh, now what we have is, so each kind of each campaign that we set up obviously serves a very distinct purpose. Otherwise yes. we wouldn't set it up. If it does nothing, then we wouldn't set it up. So, um, and, and, and some of these campaigns can kind of be set up in different ways, but overall what I would recommend just to make sure that you're utilizing visibility and all these campaigns are also, because there's obviously sponsored product advertising, there's sponsored brand and sponsored display. Sponsored brand and sponsored display are only available if you're brand registered. So I know right. a lot of newer sellers um, only kind of have access to sponsored product ads. And that's kind of, when they think Amazon PPC, they think that's all there is. But, you know, every Amazon seller with a professional selling account will have access. Um, and those that are brand registered will still have access. So that's kind of, and it's also where the bulk, I believe, of... Um, I know advertising spend on Amazon is, is of course still in sponsored products. So yeah. when you start off, what I like to have at you know minimum is at least one exact campaign, phrase, broad, ASIN targeting campaign, and then auto campaign. What I will say mm -hmm. is for the auto campaign, I don't know if others have kind of mentioned this. Um, again, this is also findings from a guy named Brandon Young. I'm not sure if he's been on before. But, oh yeah, you know, no, yeah, I know. I know Brandon Young yeah. very well, yeah. Yeah, big, yeah. Pretty big seller, big numbers. Um, yeah. And he kind of has this mastermind group. And out of the mastermind group that I at least heard this from, and that's where I'm kind of citing this, is that apparently several sellers found that running auto campaigns right at the beginning of launch can actually hurt your categorization and your ranking. Again, I can't confirm this, so that's why I'm kind of, but that's enough for me to not run auto right away. I, I like to be <laughs> a little bit more targeted. And something that you can do if you're a little bit worried, um, and I've, like I said, I've actually heard sellers as, as well in my own kind of Facebook group mention this as well, that they're like, hey, I, you know, my ranking office unstopped as soon as I started running this auto. And, I, and it, it makes it, sense. This makes sense to me. Maybe. That, I, want, I don't want to stop you, but it, that makes sense. Yeah. And basically, because with auto campaign, just for those that don't know, is you have manual, you have auto. Auto is kind of the easiest to set up, right? You're basically letting Amazon automatically target um, ASIN and keyword kind of targets and, and kind of find and, and kind of bid on those. And then with manual, you're manually telling Amazon exactly what you want targeted right. and, and all of that. So with auto, it's, it, I still recommend setting up auto, but what you can do, and this is an insight also from Destiny with Sean, anytime I hear something, I want to you know, give credit where it's due. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what you can do is go to your, um, go to campaign manager in your uh, seller account and then just go kind of like pretend like you're setting up a new campaign. So click on create campaign. 
st um, start scrolling down and you'll see the suggested keyword section, right? Amazon will suggest keywords. If you see that those suggested keywords, like when you're setting up a new campaign are very kind of, they're not relevant to your product. They're really kind of broad and loose. I wouldn't recommend setting up an auto campaign until those keywords are more relevant and more specific to your nice. product because that shows that Amazon is understanding your product better. And again, that's why I want to kind of give yeah, a shout yeah, out yeah, to Yeah, 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 no, that's good, that's good, uh, that's good. Great. But um, so yeah, and I thought that was brilliant. And we've, since we learned that we've implemented, again, can't confirm or deny mm -hmm. kind of on the auto side, but that's enough for me to, I like to wait. And again, it depends on how many sales are coming in, but usually that's the specific metric that I find is when they're, and you can tell it's like, wait, what's, what do you mean relevant versus irrelevant? You'll see. If you go in and you're looking, if you see that Amazon's suggesting, you know, I don't know, you're selling a backpack and they're suggesting shoes. There, there's some ridiculous stuff. Yep. Um, so you, you'll see kind of when you go in and once it's more relevant, then that's why I'd recommend setting up an auto. So, um, so that's kind of my recommendation there specifically kind of wanted to call that out about auto nice. campaigns, just kind of my findings. Smart. Otherwise, all those campaigns they set up right from the start, exact phrase, broad, um, and ASIN targeting campaign. And again, you can have multiple, like I said, you can ha have those kind of core campaigns or those base mm -hmm. campaigns, and then also add in that kind of, um, you know, misspellings campaign, the Spanish campaign, yep. the broad campaign. You could have just one kind of, you know, profit campaign or low comp. And then it has, you know, the, the misspelling ad group, uh, you know, Spanish, uh, broad, that can kind of keep things a little bit more organized. Um, otherwise, usually I recommend kind of one ad group per campaign to keep things a little bit more organized and ultimately it gives you more control um, yep. over bidding budgets and all of that. So yeah, so definitely those core campaigns. The, again, purpose of each campaign can, can, can vary. You can obviously add more campaigns than that, but specifically with phrase broad and auto. So first of all, I wanna make sure that those campaigns are running profitably just so I'm, yep. you know, I'm not wasting money on ad spend. Obviously I wanna be making, um, so this can just help generate additional sales, generate just kind of additional rank. They, they can be beneficial in more than one way. But the primary purpose of those campaigns for me, phrase broad and auto, mm -hmm. is to kind of discover. So, so other uh, kind of Amazon PPC experts will refer to this as kind of discovery campaigns or maybe yep. kind of those testing campaigns of basically, you know, when you have a keyword and phrase match, broad match or in your auto campaign, um, Amazon's going to kind of find those kind of other keywords that maybe um, a tool wouldn't pick up right away, or maybe, you know, you wouldn't think of on your own and you'd be shocked by how many kind of keywords and basically harvest and identify and find new campaign or new, um, new keywords to then new search terms to then add as keywords to your campaign. So yeah, that's the phrase broad and auto and how you kind of find those or, or how, how they're working is you target certain keywords uh, for phrase match. For example, if, it, if you're targeting, you know, like men's red shoes it could be, you know, men's red shoes running or running men's red shoes or, you know, different phrases that have that keyword in the phrase. And then broad is obviously loosely related, um, you know, phrases right. to your keyword and how you'll see the kind of the actual search terms that you're uh, bidding on, meaning the, the actual terms that people are typing into Amazon, then they find your ad and click and how you find those is in your search term report. Mm -hmm. So every 30 days I'll pull a search term report. Specifically, I like to look at any search term um, from my broad phrase or auto campaigns that have generated at least one sale in the past 30 days. So I do it every 30 days. So I look back at the past 30 days. I bet you, and just keep it simple. I take those search terms and add them as keywords to my exact phrase and broad. So again, it's kind of that it's, and that's one of the ways to really kind of scale your campaigns and to right. do so based on data. You're not just throwing in keywords that you right. think will work, which can be, you know, effective. And again, it depends on your goals and using, you know, viral launch and kind of, you know, using it to kind of do keyword research, additional keyword research every month, finding some new keywords that your search term report wasn't finding that you weren't thinking about on your own. So you can go even further, but that's kind of a good base is um, find the search terms that have been generated from those kind of discovery campaigns, add them as keywords. Um, and what you can do is look at kind of the average cost per click or what you can specifically do is, well, never mind. That's going to get way too complicated <laughs> and end up, no, but that's just the overall. That's good. I that's start, good. I start no, going no, like it's way good. Down. It's good. I mean, this is this is PPC is is tough stuff, man. For beginners especially, like this is, it is a it is a yeah. whole <laughs> world, man. There's a reason that yeah. people sell PPC services specifically and help people yeah. scale campaigns. But oh, for I, sure. I, I want to land the plane uh, in in terms of just grand PPC topics here. Yeah. I, I'm I'm curious if you can. I, I want to touch on this one topic. To, uh, in addition to everything else we already talked about, the idea of external traffic, meaning yeah bringing people in from something like Facebook as an example, where does that fit in? Or if it does fit in at all to your PPC strategy? 
Yep, uh, 100%. So Amazon loves external traffic and we've clearly kind of seen that. I've seen that on my own. And uh, for all of our new product launches, we always run external traffic alongside Amazon PPC. So Amazon PPC is fantastic. I believe, you know, like 97.3% of Amazon sellers should be running some form of Amazon PPC, virtually everyone. Um, Cause there are ways, even with a low budget or in, in very specific ways that you can get some really great results. So Amazon PPC should definitely be part of your strategy. Um, and, and another benefit of Amazon PPC or a couple is one, I know it's, it definitely seems complicated at first. It really does all the you know, search terms, keywords and, and, and targets and ASIN, all the kind of things. Um, but once you kind of learn it, uh, it actually becomes very, very applicable to things like Google AdWords mm -hmm. and Pinterest advertising. They have not obviously the exact same, but a lot of similarities and a lot of overlaps in terms of targeting people that are in the kind of purchase phase, right? They're in the purchase mm -hmm. mindset um, versus Facebook where you can get really great at, I mean, obviously many brands, on and off Amazon getting really right. great results with Facebook. In my view, Facebook and Instagram are a little bit tougher for a, for a beginner to really kind of utilize and, and got, kind of get the full, uh, full ROI from or, or get the full value from where with PPC, it's a little bit kind of easier for lack of a better word, because you can target very, very specific keywords. With Facebook and Instagram, you're targeting broad interests and you're targeting yep. people that aren't looking to buy. Right. So on PPC, like you're selling on Amazon, you have the opportunity to add, to market and kind of blow that up on Amazon. So it just, in my view, any so targeted, I think everyone should be. And then alongside with that and kind of dovetailing into external traffic, um, some, there are three main kind of forms of external traffic that I really like. Again, one in the sense of the kind of the overall ease for beginners to kind of get into and utilize, yep. especially knowing Amazon PPC and two kind of the, the overall ROI that you can kind of get from that or, or ROAS or, or whatever metric you're kind of looking at. Um, Google search ads. So you can target very, again, the key is really targeted. You don't want to be broad. You want to be very, very specific. So people typing in, you know, uh, men's red and black running shoes on Google. Someone typing in men's red and black running shoes on Google is likely, you know, there's a good chance they're interested in buying. And I believe it's 46% of product of online product purchases start on Google. It's a huge hmm. percentage. That's Obviously Amazon's huge. the biggest. Amazon's right, right. amazing. I mean, we know this, but, but, Google but Google's also search huge. <laughs> Yep. And a search engine for product searches, which a lot of people don't mm -hmm. take into account. So you can, to keep things really simple, there's again, with any of these kind of advertising, you can get crazy and, you know, you can, you know, run traffic to a landing page and run retargeting and have an email sequence and kind of all these things, which are really great strategy, but to keep it simple, get really targeted with your keywords that are really mm -hmm. relevant. Those same long tail keywords, potentially that you're targeting with Amazon PPC, you can potentially target with your, with a Google search ad to where when someone types in certain keywords into Google, your kind of that text ad mm -hmm. is what people usually think of can actually appear, people click, and that can direct kind of directly to your listing. And you can use some form of kind of ranking URL to maybe give a little boost, but even without a ranking URL and just kind of directing straight to your Amazon kind of product page, um, Amazon likes to see that. And that could potentially, especially during launch, um, overall help your ranking um, for, it could be specific keywords, just getting sales overall reviews and mm -hmm. all of that. So that's Google ads. Number two would be Pinterest advertising. You can target very specific keywords on Pinterest, still a much smaller platform, especially compared to Google yep. or Amazon, you know, uh, it can be smaller in, in, in some regards, but you can get very specific about keywords. You can also target interests, which I know are a little bit broader and you're not necessarily tapping in right when someone wants to purchase, but it's about, what is this stat? I remember off the top of my head, it's about 51%. Um, it's like half of all Pinterest users um, are using the platform with purchase intent. Wow where it's 17% with Facebook. So it's yeah. significantly more. And I want to make sure I'm getting this stat right, but it's a huge, it's yeah, a much yeah. higher percentage. So, yeah. And Facebook's like number two with 17%. So people are, so P Pinterest users have higher disposable income. They are there to, a, a big percentage of them are there to buy. Um, with a Pinterest ad versus a Google ad, you have a, a richer form of content. And when you run Pinterest advertising, basically what you do is you create a pin, then you target certain interests and keywords on Pinterest where people are, have these interests or typing these keywords, they see your ad, click, goes to your Amazon listing and that can kind of help boost, you know, uh, um, all that good stuff. And the more, a percentage of people that click will actually save your pin. And once wow. you turn off your advertising on Pinterest, all those saves stay there. So they, it's, it's a way to indirectly, you also kind of get, or you, it can help you rank organically on Pinterest and get visibility and sales and all that um, on Amazon as well. So. Pinterest ads, Google ads, and then number three would be influencer marketing. Micro influencer yep. marketing on Pinterest, YouTube, and TikTok. Those would be the top nice. three platforms personally. 
Instagram's great and Instagram should be part of the story, but, uh, or part of the equation, but a lot of people don't take into account kind of these other platforms. If you can get your product in a YouTube video that can last for literally years, that's fantastic. Mm. With Pinterest, you can get your, your product basically written into blogs, you know, where the blogger will kind of, you know, write an article, include your product with obviously kind of an, uh, uh, an affiliate link for them to your kind of, uh, your product on Amazon and potentially also create pins about your product where pins also, I forget what the half-life of a pin is, but can last for literally years. So YouTube content that can last for years. That's evergreen kind of traffic to your Amazon listing. Same thing with pins and blog content. And with TikTok, just for perspective, uh, just as a specific example, it wasn't really an influencer marketing, but it would work about the same. We, we just like to kind of test and do some weird stuff with our products. Specifically, we had our supplier uh, send us a video of them running over our product with the car to kind of show the durability and also just kind of see what it would do. Um, wow. So they did it. So like our supplier literally like recorded them running over our product with a car. We posted that on TikTok. It now has over 2 million views. It took us like what, 15 minutes to post it, 10 minutes. Um, and wow. unfortunately at the top, we didn't really expect it. So we didn't set up our bio, right? Like we didn't really include our branding yeah. and we just kind of were throwing it up and we were kind of surprised. So moving forward, we would have you know been a little bit more strategic about making sure you can kind of include your branding you know, your brand name in the bio. And, and, you know, if you have a thousand followers on TikTok, you can, you know, have a link, link yep. either to your Amazon or to your website or whatever. So that's the overall influencer, wow. um, Google ads, Pinterest ads. I know it's like, well, no, no, there's a lot of things to go all, in, but it's all great stuff. I, I wish we had more time and we didn't, I know. I, we didn't PPC. We can talk forever about PPC. And we also yes. didn't have to talk. We didn't get a chance to talk about um, your experience traveling. So yeah. I'm going to say this. I want to have you back on the show because we'll have to have a PPC part two, three, four, five, and we'll have to talk about traveling internationally. Sumner, I want to make yeah, sure absolutely. that our people can can connect with you and contact you. So how, for people who are listening that are so curious to learn more about yourself and about PPC and selling on Amazon, how can our listeners find you? Yeah, absolutely. Just, you can find my name. It's Sumner, S-U-M-N-E-R, Hobart. Uh, face, we have a Facebook group, YouTube, we're on TikTok. So just type in my name. Nice. You'll find me. It's pretty unique. And yeah, try to post a bunch of free content and I'm honestly here to help. If you guys have questions, always willing to kind of share, you know, what's working with my wife and I in our business, findings from, you know, some of these kind of, you know, one-off clients that we have and, and, and sharing all that. So that's what we're all about. So yeah, you can just Love it. search my name. <laughs> I will link your information in the show notes. If I would advise all of you to connect with Sumner. He is obviously you're a data aggregator and you are also an information gatherer from other voices in the space. And I think that's a, a really important quality to have. So Sumner, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. You've, you've given so much here and I certainly hope that our people connect with you. So thank you so much for being here. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Thanks for allowing me to kind of go over the time a little bit, but it's been, it's been for great. sure. So thanks so it's much. It's been awesome, man. It's been real. Uh,